Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the city of Melchizedek Detention Center. So as you know, we are now in downtown city of Melchizedek. The crime rate has been getting out of control lately, so the city decided to respond by building an enormous amount of jails and mental hospitals and not enough schools. Great. Just like every other city in this great nation. So, as you know, once you get near the jail complex, there is a reasonable expectation of lag. So until the lag clears, I am going to have you explore the Sally Port. So every person who is brought into this facility is brought in through here. Every person who is arrested they will be brought through the Sally Port. These are police cars. The blue police cars are City of Melchizedek police cars. The black police cars are the KRTA police cars. So it's true. KRTA police does not only ride trains. They um, have cars too. Many people don't think that KRTA police have cars. Or any other transit system that is but all transit system police officers have to have vehicles how else would they get from station to station you know without having to wait 20 minutes for a train so of course the lines their lines on the floor for a reason the blue line leads to the juvenile booking area and then the yellow lines leads to the adult booking area so Let's see. Okay, the lag is cleared, so the door is closing and it's working. Let's go ahead and go in to juvenile book, to the adult booking first. So, there is a separate video on here called jail booking. You know the procedure. When you get booked in the jail, you get searched, you get your property seized, you get fingerprinted, you get a mugshot taken, you um, get your property categorized, you get your charges read out to you, you get searched in there, you know, change it to your jail clothes, if you're drunk, you go in the drunk tank, medical, and then of course the bail bonds, everything, um, waiting area for the green and red zone, and then if you're booked into the jail, here we go, this is what's happening. So when you get booked into the jail, you already know what happens next, you know the drill, you go in here, you wait for them to open upstairs, because we want to keep you separate from the real inmates. Now let's show you something interesting. So this is the pre-release pod that has been so famously discussed. This is the pod where inmates come just as they're getting released. So inmates that are on their best behavior will get um, released within 24 hours from that pod. There are many pods down that hallway that does the same thing, but right now we want to show you the work release area. All the pods look the same, by the way. So when you go on work release, your tools, whatever you take, this is the desk that handles it. You do not carry any work tools through these doors, or else you will get what this facility calls 
double arrested, meaning you're going to solitary confinement. This is the prison kitchen. The lag is back, so therefore I can't show you things at will like I normally would. I don't even have time to wait um, at all, really. Like, there we go. Okay, and this is the laundry. So once you have the laundry, work release door, then back this way, this will take you back onto the ward. Of course, down here, you have all of your educational classes. So again, just because you're in jail doesn't mean you will not be educated. This is what your classrooms are going to look like. They look like just like regular classrooms, except it's in a prison, it's in a jail building. So there's eight floors worth of classrooms, plenty of programs. You have 40 programs that you could do. Let's go and take a look at a real cell block. But first, let's show something cool. In this jail, cell block doors are controlled from outside of the cell block not inside the cell block so once you're in the cell block of course you're gonna have um the guards desk the shower area which needs to be installed common day room for the inmates the second tier only for walking so you don't hang out up here everybody comes down here during the day railings a lot higher this is your typical cell. You're going to have a two beds in a cell, storage, toilet, whatever. Of course, this is all the space you're ever going to get while you're in this jail, in your cell. And it's for two people. So you have a nine meter square, nine square meter cell to share with two people. It's a lot better than back in the days, but it's still not as good as your home. Now, as we go upstairs, something is going to show up that's good. So, through here, I think I got lost in my own jail. Of course, you know the towers. But, um, yeah, I want to show... Here we go. That's release. Yeah. This is a yard. They're lining the inmates up to come inside now. But let's go all the way upstairs in this empty elevator shaft to show something pretty amazing. So now we are on floor 8N. So this is the maximum security floor. So on this floor is where we house the most dangerous inmates. All of the cells on this level are made out of glass as to allow for better visibility. So these two inmates that are in here have been on their worst behavior so now they get put in a maximum security um, cell but worse than that they are on they're being restrained so if you have here this is a vindicator he is known for chopping people and you can see here where he is in a um, restraint chair, which in Minecraft you make this simply by putting trap doors and a cobweb and a backing. But once you're in this restraint chair, you're in there for no more than 45 minutes because of blood flow issues. But this restraint chair is a very easy way to control an inmate. You do not want to be in this restraint chair for 45 minutes at all. Not even, you don't want to be in there at all. This is a Vex. He's known 
for poisoning people. So, yeah. If you don't need a restraint chair, sometimes you need to just be held in a maximum observation room. So now these are for suicidal inmates. You see, you see the thing about our prison system. We have suicidal inmates in glass boxes. At least you can't see in each other's glass box. But then you have violent inmates right here. So you have to bring them past inmates who need to be on maximum observation because of the suicide issue. Of course, this is part of the direct supervision concept that we are moving to in the nation's jails right now. So, this is the maximum security. And then now you have a ward right beneath it that's a little more. This is the restrictive privileges ward. Um, so this is, if you're, it's still a type of maximum security, but this is not segregation or solitary confinement. Segregation, you're by yourself, but on the cell block, Solitary confinement is what you just saw upstairs, where you're locked in your room 23 hours a day, let out one hour a day for good behavior. Meaning if you're badly behaved, you will not get let out for that hour. So that's um pretty much it regarding the jail. All of the pods are pretty much the same. There is a medical pod, but again, it's not much different. If you come this way, you're going to see release. So you get your property back. You uh, It's right upstairs from booking. So when it's time to release someone, the property is sent up and putting these in these boxes. Change into your clothes. Give back your prison uniform. You have the desk, release desk, offices. And now once you're finished with your prison sentence and have been discharged, if you can go home without conditions, then you will just skip the release lobby. All juveniles who has to wait on parents, the parents have to come and meet them in the release lobby. So this is these two doors. That's adult releasing. This is juvenile release. The juvenile cell block is that way. But... Adult release um, is over there, but this is the release lobby, so this is where people would come and pick up the person being released, take them downstairs. We do our best not to have more multiple people in here at a time. Now, we're going to go and see the other half of the jail, which is the juvenile block. So we saw places like the kitchen, the laundry... Now we're going to go back upstairs on the other elevator to see the juvenile block. So this is juvenile. So kids will walk past here. Anybody under the age of 17, this is their last view of the outside world until they're released. Um, once they go through here... They're going to be taken to a pod. Everybody goes to this door because that hallway just leads to nothing but watch houses for cell blocks. So once you're through here, you're going to go into a cell block. I don't know why is there a vindicator in there. Same thing. Here's another cell block. The juvenile um, jail does not have as many cell blocks as the adult jail because in juvenile there's a way better emphasis on making sure kids don't go to jail in the first place as opposed to um, trapping them there or as opposed to even having them go in in the first place so this is a cell block Okay, just pretend you did not see that um, code malfunction. I don't know. Oh, no, they're, they're teenagers. They're not adults. Okay, I thought they were adults. Adults wear green robes. Children wear, um, you know, red robes. So it's a different uniform. Now, all of these are juvenile prisoners. 
People do turn 18 in this ward, by the way. In this state, you can stay on a juvenile wing until you're 21, but you do have to wear a juvenile, I mean, an adult uniform once you do turn 18. So it's not really much of a thing, but that's just how it works. Of course, this is a school, the juvenile school. So, last thing, you go through here, again, looks just like your normal classrooms. This is a showroom, so these are classrooms we use for the juveniles. The other video, I showed you the courthouse. Courthouse was shown to you in the last video. So, today, we're just showing you the jail. Where inmates are kept and that's really it now we're gonna um go outside as if we're being released and then we are yeah we're gonna go outside and we're gonna show you the yards and the layout a little bit Okay, you've been released from jail. You'll come down the release hallway and into the central lobby of the police station. Then you'll come out into the front, into the main lobby, and then now you're released from the jail. You're out of the system now. So. When it comes to this jail complex, there are multiple yards. So you have the juvenile yard, and then you have multiple adult yards. Yards can get quite full at certain times of the day. These are all prisoners. And then you have the maximum security yard, which is just wreck cages. So technically, you have four of these wreck cages here. And all you could do is pace around in a circle back and forth. That's all you can really do. There really is nowhere for you to go until you're released from the cage to go back to your cell. That's all. You're, all you're going to have is this little bit of space to walk around in a circle. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll get a deflated basketball. Um, One more little thing. Here's two more yards. You have the parrots down there for some reason. Then this is another yard. This yard is not really heavily used. but it's big enough sometimes before we finish this tour this is the receiving area the loading dock so there is a door that goes into the prison up there but it cannot be opened unless these three doors are closed so two doors cannot open at once so with that being said thank you for Coming on me with the tour of the city of Melchizedek Detention Center. It was an honor serving you. And it's an honor to serve the city of Melchizedek.